felt at that song that the words were appropriate for our time together. And so good morning to our Facebook family that is now joining us. We welcome you. Welcome home to the Monterey Center for Spiritual Living, where there's a healing going on because we know that the love of spirit, this essence of God, is absolutely all that there is. The topic for this morning is grounded beyond being. And we are looking at the second Sunday for our, what I'm calling our back to basics. Um, and this is in the tradition of, of science of mind. We look at the first four Sundays of, the, of January we go back and, and explore the introduction to our Science of Mind textbook, uh, which gives us the foundation for um, this year's theme, which is Timeless Wisdom and Evolutionary Vision. Last week, we identified the thing itself as the power in back of all creations. This was Ernest Holmes' definition for this idea of spirit. And so a little context for today's topic, uh, we're gonna continue to look at the foundational principles of science of mind, which uses the wisdom teachings as a springboard to delve into the deep truth that all is one and always has been. I wanna keep asking you to keep that in mind. All is one and always has been and always will be, I will add this myself. Today, we look at part two of the introduction to our Science Mind textbook, The Way It Works. And as we delve into this, I invite you to hear these words from Jesus that is recorded as his prayer at Gethsemane. And this is from Matthew, the 26th chapter, the 38th and the 39th verses. Verse 38 says, and he said unto them, the disciples, my soul is consumed with sorrow. Stay here and keep watch with me. And I want to invite you to put a bookmark by that statement. Stay here and watch with me. Going a little farther as he departed from the disciples, he fell face down and he prayed, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. And so this morning, I and I would um, venture to say that many of you are longing for what we talked about last week as the comforting rhythms of the church I find myself wanting this cup to pass from me, this cup that I am feel drawn to speak about this morning. However, timeless wisdom, evolutionary wisdom and being grounded beyond being requires that I speak to what is happening in our country. To avoid doing this would be the highest form of spiritual bypass. What we just witnessed was tragic the tragic logical outcome of the we're right, they're wrong paradigm. It's time for a change. It's time for that healing that our vocalists sang about this morning, that healing that is going on. Mother, Father, God, I know there's a healing going on. It's time for us to remember our foundational principles. And for those of you who may be relatively new to science of mind, um, I want to define what we mean by principles. Principles is the source or the cause from which a thing results, a truth that is unchangeable when tested. And so we are called now to remember to bring forward into our very beingness, our foundational principles of unconditional love. They call us to stay here and watch, to stay here and watch and address what is occurring in our country. 
because this is the way it works. We stay here and watch. And by stay here and watch, I mean that we're invited to practice our principles. This is a time to call forth that love energy that we talk about. It is now time to put the talk into action. And so how do we begin to talk? We talk to each other to find a common ground. And in our search for the common ground, uh, it is not about making anyone wrong, ever. It is not about making anyone wrong. And so you may ask, how do we open this conversation in our search for common ground? We start very simply by asking, what are you feeling? And this is where we stay. This is where we keep watch. This is where we wait for the response. This is where we listen for understanding. This, my brothers and sisters, this is the way it works. We ask, how are you feeling? Or we, no, we ask, what are you feeling? Asking how takes, to, takes us to an emotional place that may not always bring up the answer or bring up the response. When we ask, what are you feeling? It triggers a different response in the brain. And our only responsibility after we ask that question is to stay there, to keep watch, to wait for the response. And this is the key, to listen for understanding. I share a story from a friend of mine that is an illustration of listening for understanding. He writes, I sat next to a Trump supporter on my flight last week who told me she didn't like Trump, but was voting for him because she had to. I said the same about Biden. She told me that all of her friends and trusted news sources told her that Black Lives Matter was a racial movement that was creating division and ripping our country and people apart. I told her, I felt the same about make America great again. She then burst into tears and told me I was the first person of color to sit down and have a conversation with her about it. I held her in my heart and she held me in hers. The truth is she was lovely. She wasn't a racist. Of course she had some learning to do, just as I. But if I canceled her right away, would she ever get the opportunity to understand? Would I ever get the opportunity to understand? And then he adds, what we landed on together was this. They've been trained to think about us the same way we've been trained to think about them. And we're being forced to choose something we don't want and blaming one another for the shortcomings of a system that isn't working for us, that isn't working for most of us. And this brings us back to the question, what are you feeling? And I remind you, I, I emphasize this, we cannot judge another's feelings. We open the conversation by asking for clarity and being authentic. Once we move into that place of judgment, then the door is closed to dialogue. I remember um, in some of our uh, spiritual classes, we have the opportunity to write thought papers. And thought papers are like feelings. You know, what, what are my thoughts on this particular phrase or expression or passage that I have just read? And I remember in one of the classes, um, a very eager TA who was, who was new as a teaching assistant in the class and, and just very, very, very eager um, commented on a student's thoughts 
And the comments were questioning the thoughts rather than going to the student and asking for clarity before writing a comment. And in fact, no comments were actually needed. And the wise instructor, not myself, but someone that I learned from, said to the TA and to the student, pause, take a breath, let's take a time out. And then the teacher looked to the TA and said, we do not have the right to judge anyone's thoughts. We have asked for their thoughts and they have offered their thoughts. And if we want clarity, we ask for clarity. And this is how it is with our conversations in getting to know one another, to be in that place where we build that common ground. Our science of mind principles call for that search to common ground, especially now. And this requires spiritual grounding. Grounding is simply the process of bringing our attention out of our minds and into our bodies and into the present moment. I'll say that again. Grounding is simply the process of bringing our attention out of our minds and into our bodies and the present moment. Grounding helps us navigate and balance these aspects of being human so that we feel centered at peace and in control of how we process energy in our day-to-day -day life. Are you beginning to get the idea that when we talk about grounding, when we talk about the search for common ground, that we're talking about it beginning within. It begins within. We have the resources within us. And we use that energy and that knowing that we have the resources within us to call forth that place of groundiness. Because grounding connects one to their heart, the seat of intuition. And isn't this what it's all about? It's about getting to know the heart of each other. The timeless wisdom uh, we, in, in, in science of mind, in embracing the wisdom and teachings of, of, of other uh, modalities, we look at the timeless wisdom of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, and he offers this description of agape love. We talk a lot about agape love. And I believe that this is what is really being called forth right now. And again, it begins within. Dr. King writes, in the Greek language, the word for love is agape. And I know this is, his, this, is, this is a repeat for many of you, if not all of you that are on this call this morning. We know the definition of agape, but I'm bringing it forth again into our awareness. Agape, more than romantic love, is more than just friendship. Agape is understanding, creative, redemptive goodwill toward everyone. Understanding, creative, redemptive goodwill toward everyone. Agape is an overflowing love that seeks nothing in return. And this is where we are on our search for common ground, in, search, in our search for understanding one another. We're not seeking anything in return other than, I would submit this, what we are seeking is that heart connection. Rising to love on this level, we love everyone not because we like them, not because their ways appeal to us. We love them because God loves. And I like this. This is what Jesus meant when he said, love your enemies. King says, and I'm happy that he did not say, like your enemies, because there are some people that I find it pretty difficult to like. 
Liking is an affectionate emotion. And I can't like anybody who would bomb my home. I can't like anybody who would exploit me. I can't like anybody who would trample over me with injustices. I can't like them. I can't like anybody who threatens to kill me day in and day out. However, Jesus, the master teacher, reminds us that love is greater than liking. Love is understanding, creative, redemptive, goodwill toward all. As we look at the evolutionary vision, it requires us to envision all people, all beings, and all life as expressions of God. And our Centers for Spiritual Living Global Vision states, we see a world in which every person is in alignment with his or her highest spiritual principle, emphasizing unity with God and connection with each other. A world which individually and collectively, we are called to a higher state of consciousness and action. This is being grounded beyond and beginning. And so the question for us this morning, for each of us, starting with myself, am I, are you willing to have the conversation to find common ground and discover the highest principle, spiritual principles within each other to prove that this is the way it works? to prove that the thing itself is the power in back of all creation, and this is how it works. Being grounded and beginning requires we honor the timeless wisdom and evolutionary vision of our founder, Ernest Holmes, where he writes in our Declaration of Principles, we believe this one, the power back of all creation, manifest itself in and through all creation, but is not absorbed by its creation. This oneness creates everything out of itself and therefore includes both the absolute and the relative, the tangible and the intangible, the physical and the metaphysical aspects of reality. in our search for common ground. We recognize the sacred books of all people and all faith traditions that declare that God is one, a unity from which nothing can be excluded and to which nothing can be added. Let's pause and take a breath on that one for a moment. This is, this is a very profound teaching and it comes from Ernest Holmes' book, What Religious Science Teaches. All sacred books declare that God, or whatever this creative energy is that is recognized by that tradition and by that culture and by those people, declares that there is a unity from which nothing can be excluded and nothing can be added because we're all one. Our global vision declares that we see a world where all life, all people, is an expression of the divine. That's what we say with our mouths or what we write in our publications. But let's step back and take a reality check for a moment. What we observe are social inequities, racial injustice, and disenfranchisement of people throughout our world. We observe deeply held beliefs of race and superiority, preferences and privilege that are not consistent with our spiritual and universal principles. Our evolutionary vision for humanity has to be a world where people live in alignment with spiritual truth. And we discover this in our search for common ground 
by recognizing the oneness of all life. In our five-step affirmative prayer spiritual treatment, we begin by recognizing that there is one life. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. And that life is my life now. If we can only remember that, if we can start our day with that, whether, whether you complete all of the other five steps and other, the other four steps or not, it's crucial to remember to begin with there is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is my life. And all of this is perfect. And so in our search for common ground, in our recognition of the thing itself, and in, 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 in our understanding and our appreciation and in, in our knowing and in, in, in our practicing of how it works, the way it works, meditation and prayer are the tools that we have for grounding ourselves. These are our most common tools. Our search for common ground requires that we be grounded in the principles of science of mind and that we are so convinced, convinced and convicted in this reality of oneness that it becomes well established within and manifests as truth in action and form. This is the way it works. It works for us by working through us and it works for us by being grounded in our principles, in our principles of truth and convicted and convinced convicted and convinced that there is only one reality and that is established in truth and in action and in form. From the beginning of creation, this unity of life was set in motion. Creation is the giving of form to the substance of mind. It is at play upon life itself, the action of limitless imagination upon an infinite law. And this is another way of Ernest Holmes using a lot of words to say, again, that there is from the very beginning creation existed. And out of this existence, the unity of all life was set in motion. And we are at play we're at play in life acting upon itself. We're acting out the play of life. We're acting out the substance of mind. We're acting out the limitless imagination of this infinite law. And wouldn't it be grand if our imagination took us to those places that lift our spirits, that allow us to see oneness in absolutely everything that is around us. It was easy to see beauty in and oneness in nature. It's easy to see beauty and oneness um, in animal life. It's easy to see beauty in nature and oneness in being surrounded by what is familiar. And yet that is a very narrow focus because there is so much more. There is so much more to creation. And when we open our imagination to the unity of life, this game of life that we're playing out, when we open our imagination to this, we experience marvelous results. We experience the oneness of life. And through this unity of the one mind, we have the power through our word. We have the power through our daily spiritual practices to ground ourselves in the absolute knowing and practice of oneness and to manifest the thought of God, the true reality of what we believe. And so the invitation this morning, the action item that I would invite you to take away this morning is to prove this for yourself. 
have the courage to prove this for yourself by asking someone that you may not know, what are you feeling? And stay with them, watch with them, be with them, listen for understanding. And as you're listening for understanding, I invite you to open your heart. As I intend to open my heart and to connect at the heart level with that individual and to recognize that it's not them against us. It is we together moving forward. Our affirmation for today, our one sentence takeaway affirmation. Um, and I apologize to the tech team. I didn't send this to you beforehand to drop into the chat. Um, but the affirmation is today, I am forever one with all life. Today, I am forever one with all life. And I invite us now to pray together. And as we set the intention for prayer, I call forward the name of Reverend Howard Hamilton, one of the ministers of the Monterey Center for Spiritual Living whose shoulders I stand on, who made his transition, who stepped out of this life into that greater light on the 8th, which I believe was, was either Thursday or Friday. And so we call forth the memory and the love and the legacy of Reverend Howard. And we also lift Reverend Pamela, who co-ministered with him here at the Monterey Center. We lift Reverend Pamela. And we lift the other members of their family and their close friends. And especially we lift our own Reverend Cindy and Lynn, uh, who were very close to the Howards. And we just honor that legacy and that love as we know that the one life, the one power, and the one presence is forever expressing. It changes form. It shifts. It takes different turns. It takes different twists. And yet it's the same. It is the same. I am, we are, one with this life. And so I give thanks for our time together this morning. I give thanks for the words that have come forth inspired by spirit. I give thanks for the opening that has taken place in my own heart. And I give thanks for the opening that is realized and recognized in the hearts of all who are joined together in this community and who are joined together in other communities and places of faith, knowing that the truth is no respecter of persons. There is only one truth because there is only one life. And so it is from this place of knowing that I now release this word into the law, knowing that it is done and that all is well. And I invite you to affirm this with me as we say together, and so it is. And so it is. And now it is our opportunity to participate in the divine, the divine flow of circulation um, known as spiritual coins. In other words, it is time for our gracious giving. And we have our giving statement, which will be on our screen momentarily. It's just a reminder that we live in a bountiful universe. And so I recognize the presence of God within as the source of my abundance. And out of my abundance, consciousness flows everything I could desire in life. With gratitude and thanksgiving, I now participate in the flow of uninterrupted abundance. I release this visible substance as an outer symbol of my inner supply into the physical world. This prosperous experience is evidence of my abundance consciousness. And we invite you to use one of the various modalities for supporting the spiritual center by mailing a check 
to the center. The address is on your screen, going to our secure website, which is on your screen, and also for our friends who are tech savvy, our text message is on the, the text to give is located on our screen. Thank you to our Facebook family for joining us this morning, and I invite you to return next week where we continue the theme of timeless wisdom and evolutionary wisdom. Evolutionary wisdom. The V and the W that close together sometimes gets to be a little of a tongue twister. We continue our January series of timeless vision and evolutionary wisdom, and the focus will be on here and now. So thank you for joining us. Be blessed. Go forth and make a new friend by asking for their feelings. Chart new common ground.